I'm Rob Lapuri, a senior editor at Gold Derby, and I am delighted to be joined by some of the most acclaimed composers working today. Laura Cartman from American Fiction, Gary Clark from Flora and Son, Anthony Willis, Saltburn, and Michael Giacchino for Society of the Snow. Okay, so I would love to know what, what is your number one priority? I'm going to go to you first, Laura. What is your number one priority when writing music that will elicit a strong emotional response from the audience? What goes through the back of your mind? You've been working on films for years now. What do you, what do, you do when you want to really go for the emotion? Well, I just have to stop this entire conversation and talk to Michael because Michael, Spider-Man is real. Oh, I know that. I know he's and, and you I, know what you I mean. Just, what what I'm saying. It. Like no, you no, destroyed no. my whole world. No, and no, I'm no. Just what like, I'm no, saying, stop the conversation. What I'm saying is you're safe at the end of a Spider-Man movie. You're safe no, no. at the end because I, you said we could talk over each other. I'm literally going to leave this and get in the car to go premiere the Marvels. Which is I'm awesome. You should. You, they're all real. Okay. Yes, they're <laughs> real in that bubble. They're real Spider in that Man bubble. They are real, real in that bubble. They're absolutely all right, all right. real within that bubble. But I can tell you that I sat here at my house with the two of the survivors from that crash. And suddenly my mind was blown up into a different perspective that I had never had before working on films. All my life I had said, it doesn't matter if it's Captain Kirk or Remy the Rat, they're all real. They all have these hopes, wishes, and dreams that, and problems that they're dealing with. And we are with them through it all. But in the end, <clears throat> I never sat with any of them out in my backyard and heard the true stories of what was going on and what I just said. So for me, it was a very different experience in that sense and just dragged me into an emotional hole that I had never been before. So you know, that's, it's all, that's all I meant. That's all I meant, Laura. No, 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 I get it. And I'm just teasing <laughs> you. And, and what's funny about that, which is so interesting, because I've spent so much time working on documentaries, right? Because that's been kind of the arc of my career. <clears throat> and what happens in a documentary is, of course, the people are real, right? Mm. They're real people, they have real stories. But the minute the aperture of the camera is put on them, they become a character in a film. So it's all, you know, it's all, um, it's all like Michael said, it's really playing with empathy. It's really playing with emotion. It's being, you know, your most empathetic self. I mean, I think that kind of answers your question, Rob. I don't, what was your question? I don't remember. <laughs> well, I, think what he said, I think the idea that we all want to tell the truth of the character that is sitting I, before us. That's so right. We all and, need to get to the truth of that character. That's, and, that's our job. And, and, and you have right. to be, you know, film scoring is an exercise in total empathy, right? You've yeah. got to be able to identify and feel the pain and feel <clears throat> the happiness and feel everything that these characters are going through, whether they're real or not, it's the same thing. And then somehow you have to decide how that sounds, you know, what does that emotion sound like? I mean, that is the craft of it. And of course, every single one of us might come up with a completely different musical rendition of what that emotion sounds like in any given um, situation, which is what makes this one of the most fascinating things I've ever done in my life. Wow. See, yeah, I think to, to, to elaborate on that, I think like certainly I, I do this and I'm, I'm sitting on this panel with, with people I greatly admire and have since before I was doing this. But for me, it, it all started by being an audience member and so my priority is to try to re like recapture the feeling that I had as a kid and beyond when I watch things. I think I find it harder and harder to exit the process even as an audience member now, just because we have so many attachments, whether it's, oh, my friend worked on that, or my friend wrote that, or I know that was, where that was recorded, or maybe I was up for that job or, or whatever it is. And so really that's my priority is to try and capture into the essence of what it was like to be in the audience and, and like to, to fall in love with films. Wow. What about you, Gary? Well, I was just thinking there about like when you find a quick time of one of the versions of a scene that didn't work, you know, <laughs> and you go back and you go, oh my God, that was so wrong. <laughs> and you kind of just, how, why didn't I know that was so wrong? But it's part of the journey, isn't it? You've got to try some stuff and, and, and and it's just like do you ever do that where you go back and find something that that hit the cutting room floor and um, I don't know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, please, I look at things now that I thought I did right and realize, oh God, it, I, I I did not do that as 
right as I had thought or hoped. That's why I don't like looking at the things that I finished anymore. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I don't either. I keep looking this way. Yeah. <laughs> wow, it's yeah, that's really fascinating because I think any of us who who love film um, have our favorite film scores and composers. Uh, for some reason, film nerds and just the public have a real affinity and affection for film and TV composers because you really do make us feel something. And I know that when I listen to Michael Nyman's The Piano, which I still do to this day, it does it does things in my mind that are very hard to explain and because it really makes me feel something. I'm curious. I know that you all probably don't like to listen to too much current um, compose, composer's work because you don't want it to influence your own work. But do you all have those composers or film scores that you think are genius, that you love, that you've carried with you over the years? Who would like to go first? I always think of um, Paris, Texas, Ray Kudo, that slag guitar sounding like the desert, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, there's just, I'm a guitarist, as well as you can probably see some of these guitars. <laughs> but there's something about, I'd actually yeah, love to score a whole film with just one guitar. I'd love to... I'd love to score a film with one just one guitar, but the, the the yeah that that was one of those ones that really was that kind of opened my mind to what you could do with a a film score. Wow. Wasn't what you expect. I mean, I always loved Jerry Goldsmith because he was so experimental with everything. It wasn't always just the orchestra. It was mm. you know he was tearing apart things and people were bringing him weird things to bang on. They would just be like, "Yep." let's put that in there like it, it, these ideas I'm and it was Planet of the Apes the first time I saw that movie as a kid that just sort of like blew me away with what you could do with sound and music that I hadn't ever thought of before you know mm -hmm. uh I always admired him in so many ways because he could do it he could do it all and it's so interesting Michael that you then ended up working on a Planet of the Apes film yes the, I know I know what I, I I and I was obsessed with Planet of the Apes when I was a kid believe me I don't even want to go into the ways in which I was obsessed it was just obsessed but <laughs> uh I I was lucky to then work with uh Emil Richards who was an incredible percussionist who also worked with Jerry on those movies and wow. he would and he brought a lot of the instruments to the scoring session that he used on the original we were able to play around with those so it was really wonderful just to hear those stories through someone who's really really spent time with him and knew him wow what about you, Anthony? I mean, as a kid, I, I loved any score that, that was associated with building a world. You know, um, Braveheart and James Horner's beautiful work that took you into this incredible romantic um, setting in Scotland. And, and, and you know, obviously, a you know, had a period feel to it. Gladiator, I loved. Titanic, I loved. Anything that, that was kind of helping to create, you know, recreate something. I, and I couldn't. I think just in, in general, in, in filmmaking, I couldn't believe the lengths that people would go to to, to build things and sync them and <laughs> break them. And, you know, um, so musically for me, that was the kind of, that was the spark. It's like, oh, there's a real need here. There's a job here to be done. And obviously then, but then that, that becomes much more special when you're dealing with contemporary emotions and, um, you know, the, the kind of the needs of, of our sound world today are actually, I think, harder to score because they're not, we're not referring to, you know, sort of uh, existing references. So yeah, James Horner, um, I, you know, always, always loved his, his music and, and, you know, and I, all my peers today, everyone on this panel, I mean, well, it's amazing what people are continuing to reinvent. So yeah, um, yeah we're really lucky to do this. Final word to you, Laura. Well, it's hard. I mean, there's so many great scores. I mean, the one that I think is probably the most iconic for me is North by Northwest. And I think it's because, you know, you talked about the about comedy. The thing about that theme is it works comedically and it works also for suspense. So and that's pretty masterful. It gets big and small. It uses the orchestra terribly imaginatively. And um, I just think it's fantastic. But, you know, there's also other stuff I love. I love Anna Meredith's score for eighth grade. I think that was an incredibly underrated score and really captured um, what it was like to be a young person and sort of the hero of your own story. You know, we could go on. I can I could sit here and compliment my darling friend, Michael. Um, <laughs> 
you know, tell the cows come home with 53,000 scores that he's written and my other colleagues. So I think we all respect each other a lot. I think there's sometimes just things that touch our heart, you know, man with a golden arm. I mean, there are lots of them that I absolutely adore. Yes. It's just so, yeah, this conversation could go for hours um, because yeah. I think we, yeah. all, we all have those scores that we carry with us. I have so many other examples, but I'll leave it there. Thank you all of you so much for your time today. What an amazing panel to get to uh, host. Um, good luck on this very exciting awards uh, journey. Um, and uh, again, we appreciate your time today. Yeah, Thank and it was great to meet all of you. This is, it's, it's, it's you know, it, you it's too. something we don't get to do that often is actually get together with composers. So that's that's always nice to hear. I like loved hearing what you all had to say. Best of luck to everybody. And we'll see um, um, Laura and Michael. Thank you all. On Thursday.